All right, hi, and welcome to Hanging with TCB. This is the Google Plus Hangout series that allows you to get to know some of our writers on our site, the Crawfish Boxes. It's very simple. I am going to ask one of our writers five questions in regards to their love of baseball and the Astros. Today we've got Jordan Sams, one of our minor league writers. Jordan, how are you? I'm good, bro. How are you? About to go to the gym. About to just watch some catfish. <laughs> Showing off already. You see the tank top and the yeah. Yeah, I gotta gotta look good for the ladies. Gotta stay out. <laughs> You're probably the best one looking so far. So, minus Terry, of course. I gotta I yeah, gotta say that. Or she'll, she'll she'll get on me if I don't say Terry's the best one Terry. looking so far. Terry by far the best looking. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. So you can get to the gym. Why and how did you start following the Astros? Uh. So I started following the Astros probably back in 2000, and it's a weird situation because I was born and raised in Vegas, um, so I kind of just had to pick my teams at random. And no joke, uh, the way I became an Astros fan was I was playing backyard baseball, I think 1998, and Jeff Bagwell was my favorite character to play with. So I started following Jeff Bagwell, Craig Vigio, and the Astros probably, probably in 98 or 99, and that's how I became an Astros fan. And that's a that's a video game you're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a computer game with like cartoon characters. Uh, all the backyard baseball fans out there will definitely know Pablo it, it, Sanchez. Is that the one with Mo Vaughn and like the really low hat? Yes, it's, it's got Mo Vaughn. It had Ken Griffey, Derek Jeter, all those guys. Um, yeah, and and Jeff Bagwell was just my favorite character to play with outside of Pablo Sanchez, of course. Yeah, I remember, I remember that game. And I actually had a similar thing, only I played it a few years earlier with Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball when they had all the all yeah. the different names and stuff. That's that's when I started really following the Astros, too. Yeah, I mean, before that, uh, of course, I, I did like the Mariners growing up. Like Before before that, I liked Griffey and all those guys and A-Rod and, and those guys. But I didn't pick a team until the late 90s. I was, I was in, like, fourth or fifth grade. I'm kind of showing how young I am right now. Uh, <laughs> But I was, I was in fourth or fifth grade, and I, I decided to roll with the Astros as my favorite team. And a couple of years later, I was super stoked when they got Pettit and Clemens, and 04 and 05 were, were magical. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. I like this story. So most memorable Astros moment? Uh, most memorable Astros moment probably wouldn't be a single moment. It would be those 04 and 05 runs for sure. Um, the 04 run specifically with with Carlos Beltran was probably the most fun I've ever had following a specific player in any sport. Like I'm a diehard basketball fan, diehard football fan, go Cowboys as well. Um, but that 4 one run with Beltran was, was just amazing. And then obviously the 5 World Series starting 15 and 30 and then going on that huge run to end up going to the World Series. It felt like every game was a playoff game during, down the stretch. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I remember those years too. And we talked about that with Terry in the last one. But yeah, those those were some fun years. And uh, I think if you just kind of put off every Houston Texans fan, <laughs> it's like being yeah, an Astros. Uh, yeah. else. <laughs> well, I mean, I used to write for a Sixers blog, and everybody hated that I liked the Cowboys as well. So no matter where I go, everybody hates that I like the Cowboys. But sorry, just got to deal with it. No, nah, it's, it's all good. Like you said, you were in Las Vegas. You grew up in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, no, born and yeah. raised in Vegas. So. Uh, my teams are kind of all over the place. Cowboys, Astros, Sixers, all over the place, man. Are you still living in Vegas right now? or? Yeah, I'm living in Vegas. Yeah, I lived in Vegas. I'm 24. Uh, I lived in Vegas my entire life, except for a couple months where I lived in Boston. That's where all my family's from. Okay, cool, cool. And you didn't become a Boston Red Sox fan. That's crazy. I, I did not become a Red Sox fan. I kind of like to go uh, – I kind of like to stray away from what my family likes. They're Patriots fans. They're Red Sox fans. So I, I try to stay away from, from all of that. <laughs> nice. I like that. Right. So go on, other than going to the gym, what other hobbies do you enjoy doing? Uh, I like to watch re a lot of reality TV. Um, the challenge is on as we speak, I believe, right now. Um, I, big Brother? Do you, big yeah. Brother. I'm a yeah. big fan of Big Brother, for sure. Um, I off and on collect baseball cards, baseball, football, basketball cards, actually. I do that occasionally. Sometimes it gets expensive, so I try to do it just every once in a while. Uh, play video games, go out, see a lot of movies, nothing too out of the ordinary. Trying to stay out of the friend zone, like I said earlier. <laughs> All 
All right, so if you're stuck on a deserted island, which Astros player do you want to be stuck with? Is this a current or former? You or can any? do any. any, Anyone. I, and I know you're a minor league guy, so even anyone in the minor yeah. leagues right now. Uh, this is a good one. Um, I would probably go – I would have to go with Lance Berkman, I think. I think he's – he seems like he'd be a fun guy to hang out with. All <laughs> oh, stuck on an island. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he, I mean, he's got he's got funny stuff to say all the time. He seems like he'd be he'd be an entertaining dude. You never know what you're gonna get. Jose Lima uh, would also be another fun one. Yeah, he would. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah. and Berkman's the big puma, so he could go hunt for you. <laughs> the big puma. Absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of good ones. I'm trying to think of uh, other ones. Who who would your answer be? Oh geez, I don't even know. I I, yeah. I I just enjoy listening to all yours. I haven't really picked one yet. What was your favorite answer from uh, other people that you can yeah. remember? I don't know. Chris, we had a weird one where we started talking about like cannibalism okay. and and all these other people and Jose Altuve and Justin Max. Yeah, he said Justin Maxwell. Jose Altuve, I think, was one of them. Uh, Terry just said Jason Castro because he's he's got dreamy eyes and she just want to have like an intelligent talk with him. Yes. I don't know. Has I guess maybe. Was- yeah, I, I'd probably go with, like, Brad Osmond since, like, he can surf and stuff, so I'd find yeah. something to do around there. And he's also another intelligent guy, so he'd, you know, figure out how to make a fire or something. There you go. I was going to say, has, has Jason Castro replaced Brad Osmond as kind of the all the ladies' dream boy? Yeah, pretty much. I think on yeah. the – I don't know if there's another dream boy you'd, you'd say on the team. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to ask Terry about that. Yeah. All right, if you could change one thing about the Astros, what would it be? Uh, well, previously it would have been logos, or not the logo and the uniform. So they've done a good job of that. Um, if I could change one thing currently, I would probably say the lack of media coverage, probably. I mean, it's. I think everybody's kind of in the same boat on that one. Everyone would like to see the Astros get a little bit more media coverage, positive media coverage. Since Luna has taken over, uh, they started to get a little positive spin, but for a long time, it seems like the Astros have been have been everybody's kind of whipping boy in the right. media. Right. Yeah, I think that's the same thing that Terry said. It was just the national media giving him some more props, which you know it'll come eventually. But yeah, right now it's just just white noise, like uh, like Bo Porter says. But I'm still honestly, I'm still in the honeymoon phase. I it was a dark <laughs> time. It was a dark time for the Astros fans from like '06 to to '09. 2010 ish, but I mean everything that I've wanted to see changed has changed since then. I love Jeff Lou now. I love the obviously the front office. I love the new uniforms. I love the how they're building the minor league system. I love how they're building the team. So still in the honeymoon phase right now. There's not a whole lot I would change. Talk to me again in like three or four years when they trade all their top prospects for for some player to be named <laughs> better than it on his last on his last gasp. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time right now. Just it, you're lucky you're still in the honeymoon phase. I think I'm out of the honeymoon phase, and this this season is just dragging on me right now. Yeah, no, I I feel for you, man. I I work uh, I work twelve thirty to nine thirty, so I I get to watch like one Astros game a week, and it's just like ah, uh, you know, I, yeah, I they lost again. Yeah, they lost again. Yeah, I I get alerts to my phone. I'm like, oh hey, the Astros lost again, and I know uh, a lot of people aren't a fan of it, but I this is my thing with the with the whole Carlos Rodon thing. I don't watch the Astros and root for them to lose. I don't want people to get that that misconception. But if I see the Astros lose, it's like, oh hey, you know, they're they're one loss closer to Carlos Rodon, who's the best prospect since probably Bryce Harper. So I, I I'm secretly a little excited every time they lose a game. I gotta look at the silver lining, and uh, like you said, like the Astros, these last two drafts really haven't had the like one standout player to draft. So getting Carlos Rodon would would definitely help out, and with the depth and the talent in the system already, man, that's this is oh, yeah. that'd be the that'd be the cherry on top because uh, the the farm system is is becoming more and more loaded by the by the event, whether it's the draft, whether it's the J- J- July second signing period, whether it's the trade deadline, it's getting more and more loaded. Where I feel like we're just that Carlos Rodon draft would be the cherry on top, and we that would kind of springboard us towards big time contention for a long, long time. Right on. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, Jordan, uh, and we will catch you next time on Hanging with TCB.